New Year 2021. I am welcome to the first of our monthly webinars for Navit. It's in the middle of January now, uh, but we will continue into February and so on and so forth with the first week and uh, the first Friday. I hope you all are staying well out there and thank you for joining today. There's some practicalities before we start. Uh, the webinar today will be recorded and be available on our web pages next week on demand. Uh, you have the possibility to ask some questions during the presentation. You have the question pane down to the right. Uh, so please add your questions going forward and we'll try to answer them out uh, during the presentation or at the end. Um, and um, if needed, we will do a short Q&A also in the end uh, to get some feedback on what you have seen today. So, in our latest webinars uh, last year, we talked a lot about workflows in Aviate. Uh, today, we are going to talk about uh, some new features. We had a release uh, in the end of December, and one of the new features that we released there was the Align Profile feature that we're going to talk about today for Navit Saturn landscaping. And I'm very glad to have Matthijs with me today. He's going to walk us through that functionality and see how we can use it in your designs. Uh, he's our product specialist, uh, both for Navit architecture and site and landscaping. So he's uh, together with me deciding what we're going to do in the development side for Navit site and landscaping. Um, and this is one of his ideas as well. And I guess he will be pretty eager to show it, but I have some more slides to go through before we end there. Good so, morning, everybody. Uh, just, <laughs> <laughs> so I just wanted to tell you that your vote and wishes matters. Uh, for those who joined us in, in the webinar we had back in August last year, uh, we asked you to vote for if you're going to work with uh, road design in Revit or importing LAN XML files. And you voted for the simple road functionality and we gave it to you available in the release in December. So it's important, ideation, give us some information. ID, uh, new ideas or improvements, and uh, we will prioritize those into development. So some more information um, about today's topic. Um, we are talking about a prof align profile solution that you can use for, for ditches, for roads, uh, different scenarios. And uh, Matthias will walk us through how we're going to use that one. Um, and we use existing functionality within site landscaping to, to deliver uh, this new Align Profile solution. So, uh, with no further delay, uh, we hand the screen over to Matthijs, and he will take us through the new feature. As Jan Tore mentioned, um, I'm going to show the Align Profile new functionality today. And to make it a, a simple road function, we, we combine that with the align floor to topo and modeling floors as roads or uh, roads as floors, what I <laughs> want to call it. So having a, a floor and <clears throat> using it as a road. So um, the whole function is based on, on lines again, as we uh, all always do with our functions in site landscaping. Can be model lines, detail lines, and uh, I prefer to uh, use model lines. Uh, they can be on the sea level and will not be exported, can be hide and taken um, back in any, any case, in any view. Uh, the line functionality is also in the site landscaping ribbon, so that's also one of the the basics uh, for Navier and landscaping, and um, to use the, the align profile, we we can adjust the tuple surface along a, a line, so the length profile, and one of the of some of the the settings uh, must be done before you start the actual function. So. As uh, everybody uh, who has seen some of the Navigate site landscaping functionalities, 
before uh, they will know about the new and existing terrain and how you can compare uh, cut and fill and things like that but for now i'm just talking about the point interval so this is how many points we're placing and if you're placing uh, um, an interval a smaller interval placing more points will take longer time get a more detailed result but um, yeah you need to find a balance there uh, the other thing is the, the cut and fill settings for the sides. Um, and these dialog boxes can be used as in, um, uh, in Revit, where you can also use, um, for instance, 5% five, uh, 5 and the, the dialog will um, convert it to the the units you have set for the project so in this case i want to use the one to two so you can use one to ratio also it will also convert this and when you have set some point interval settings and the cut and fill settings on the slopes um, on the side um, we can start a line profile. So I've already drawn a line um, in the middle here, and I've also uh, drawn a, a modeled a floor. This is just a, a simple piece of top surface, just to see the. It's an, a simple example. Uh, the points are on zero. Um, it's 150 by 100 meters. And yeah, go from start from here to see uh, what we can. Uh, we can do here. So I have a little gap here and start here and go around and end up here again. Um, <clears throat> so yeah, five meters, two meters, it's, uh, I change it a little bit sometimes. Um, I think two meters can be done. All these things I will do will not take longer than a half minute uh, to a minute, but um, Okay, we start the function, we get a warning that we don't have a copy, so we will just continue and pick the center line of the, the thing we are going to change. Um, so you can see that you can pick a profile and that comes to the next thing. So here we can choose a profile, but what profile will we be able to choose? The one that is in the project. So if we open the families here and see, here I have two profiles. Um, and then we'll show you how, um, for instance, this profile is looking. So a normal profile in, in Revit um, is, um, uh, requires a, a closed loop like this. Otherwise, a profile will never work. Um, for this function, we actually uh, require that there are no vertical lines like this because we cannot place two points straight over each other in the topo surface. So what we want to do is actually do a profile looking more like this. So here I've done two profiles. This one is actually a little bit more complicated as you can see, a little swale on the side, a straight piece and some slope. So you can use whatever profile you need or want to use. And so for now, I'm going to use the profile two. You can see what happens if we use the, the profile one. So start it again. And yeah, you get the, the profile one here, just for the first one and profile two. Um, so to start off, you, you have your start point. Uh, it is uh, on zero. And the end point is also on zero. And um, you can adjust those points just by dragging. Um, the first thing we do is turn on grid, snap to grid. So you will snap to the to the grid. Uh, and the first and the, this, the last point will all, always uh, only be possible to change the height. But if you're going to uh, snap to the to the content, you can see you can turn back to the, the zero height. Um, but we can add points, and those can be be placed um, somewhere in the in the file. Um, some 
and they can be adjusted as well. So I will start off with placing some points and go to the select and edit points to, to add it in. Then you can drag them around and you can also do that uh, totally freely. But you see, you cannot go further than the next point. So we have some limitations that makes it possible to actually do this change. Um, so if we turn on um, the snaps, you snap to the grid and we can also adjust the grid. So I can take and change that to 10 meters, for instance. Uh, then you get a 10 meter by 10 meter. Um, this is showing millimeters for now. I like to work with millimeters. And for those that have been working with um, with road designs, uh, they know about the vertical exaggeration. So you can actually uh, change that as well. Then you will uh, see uh, um, the, the, the Z axis stretched out um, to see a better uh, look of the profile. Um, so for now I'm going to snap on the content and place the first two points uh, on the content on the on the zero. And um, so it's, it's zero. You can uh, put in a value and maybe the other ones a little bit on the on the grid. So snapping on the grid here putting Points. This is just an example, but I'm going a little bit up and down. Uh, and in advance to to the point placement, we can also adjust the corner radius. This is actually the profile radius, so we will do some some small adjustments. Um, now we'll put in uh, 50 meters on the on the points. And if you change this radius to something more than actually is possible, it will adjust it to uh, what what is possible. So the, the minimum value that is actually possible to to use on that on that stretch. And um, so I'm using the 50 meters here for a smooth transition in between between the points. Um, and yeah, if you look at the points, you can also adjust the slope from previous. So this is also something that can be really helpful. What we have seen and understand is actually that you need uh, the percentage here instead of degrees. But um, yeah, for now, um, we're going to do some some small modifications uh, and improvements on it. But for now, um, yeah, I can, you can say that um, there, there are a lot of like web pages that can convert these things. So um, for now, we need uh, some extra help if you if you want uh, to know what 14 degrees in percentage is, for instance. So I'm uh, running it on profile one. And what happens uh, if you run it on this first profile, you get this message that it, it cannot use the vertical line. So that's what I explained about the profile. So I'm using the profile tool. It's a little bit more complicated. Uh, um, other buttons, yeah, we can remove the, the points and we can also reset so everything gets straight out and we have only the first start, two start points. So first run. Um, some indication on how long uh, this will take. We have a progress bar. Um, not always really easy to to find out how long this process will take. We we're going into the top of surface and do changes to it, so um, that can have different results. And to make it a, a sort of simple road function, we we do an alignment of the of the floor in advance. So putting that one on top. Um, and this is then following the center line as well because that's a little bit higher. So you get a quite nice road on top of the, the, the surface in this uh, example. As you can see, it adds uh, boundary lines of the affected area, sometimes a little bit uh, collision here, but uh, it's trying to do that as good as possible. And this is uh, 
for when we want to do changes. So when we want to modify the, um, the path, the, the center line of the road or the, the modification, or want to do adjustments on the heights, um, we'll be able to reset that area. And this indicates uh, which area will be affected when you do this reset. So if you do some other modifications on uh, on the topo surface in in this uh, in this area or in the neighborhood of your road, you you know about the affected area for this road. So two meters was a little bit too much, probably <laughs> took a long time. But um, if you should do this manually, it would take much much longer time. So. Um, I've also opened the sections here to show you how this will look in section view. And you, you get a message of the, the floor not uh, meeting, uh, the thickness is not totally correct. That's normal Revit message. So this is how it looks in 3D, uh, the floor following the, the top of surface. And um, we open some sections. And so it looks, as you can see, section one is here, and section two is here. So this is, in principle, what the function does. And when you do a um, modification on the either the center line or you want to do some modifications on the height, uh, we can just run the function one more time on the same center line and you get your same uh, input back as it was. So if you um, want to do some uh, changes, you can just drag these points and, and get to adjust the height uh, from here or you can just drag them. Um, check them around. And when doing a new run on the same stretch, um, you'll be able to, to reset what we have done here. So then it will delete all the points in this affected area and place new points and make new area line, area, yeah, sorry, boundary lines for the affected area uh, after the new modification. So you're uh, free to choose that or not. Um, there's some information about it here as well, the reset thing thing. Um, so what happens, did a small change. Uh, it's uh, going to, um, to reset existing topo surface, uh, delete, yeah. So for now, um, I, have, I don't have a copy, so it cannot reset, so it will delete instead and it will ask me to delete the lines so you can also choose to keep them assume if it will show the whole affected area so for now i'm doing a okay it resets and runs a new run with the modification for the with the new settings and we will see a small mismatch between the um, the aligned floor, what was aligned to the, the first modification and um, and the new modified terrain. So here you can see that there is also some small mismatches here, but uh, this is the new affected area. So resetting is actually doing the thing we are are, uh, yeah, we, we could do before as well with the reset points here. Um, so this is also possible to do. Um, and as you see, you don't have any uh, existing or new, you, you will delete the points. So for now, I'm just going to close this one and opening another project and showing some more examples in a real project or uh, based on Real, to, real terrain, um, doing a 3D view side by side 
and start off with um, an example of a swale along a road. <clears throat> so here I have made, um, I've drawn a line um, offset from the roads, some four meters or something. Uh, may want to do a swale here. And this is how it looks in section. So we can have the section also here. So I've done some modifications here already and made some roads, uh, aligning the, some floors to existing terrain. And now I want to dig a, uh, a swale in the side. Same thing here. I have some profiles. Here I have two profiles, one for a road I'm going to show afterwards and the swale. And if you um, look at that profile, yeah, it will be just some line. So if you're going to use profiles, try to avoid uh, round forms because it, the function try will try to divide it in small pieces and you will get a lot, a lot of points. So um, for this demo, I've done a really a simple swale uh, profile to not um, to sitting here and waiting for forever, but um, of course, the more detailed, the longer it takes. So for making a profile like that, you can just start a new family profile and, and just draw uh, the line as, as, as you like the, the profile to, to look. So this can be used as a profile if you, if you like. And so for now, I'm going to use that swale profile along the the road here and try to, to follow the terrain as much as possible. So starting same function, I am going to use two meters here. <clears throat> um, same cut and fill value, same point interval. This is a project where we have, where I have done a copy of the existing and new terrain. So you don't get this message about copying. Um, get the, the total distance from start to end. Uh, we can use the profile. You can add in some extra points along the existing terrain. You can modify those. Um, you can snap to the content and snap to the existing terrain. And something that you have in advance here, if you're using um, existing and new terrain is that um, you can actually see the, the new terrain as well. So in this case, it's, that's, it's not a big difference, but uh, if you have done some modifications already uh, before you started this function, you can uh, you can see that at once. So change the um, transition a little bit uh, using 50 meters as well here. On all three points. And um, yeah, run it on this profile. So then we will see a swell on this side of the of the road in plan and in 3D is it's uh, affecting this this part of the terrain. Are they coming in some questions, uh, Jan Tura? No, not don't yet. be quiet. So I guess they are concentrating on what you're trying to show them and how to use the line profile functionality. Um, Good. But I, I'm monitoring the question, so yes, uh, I'll let you know going forward. So after this uh, example, I'm doing one more example to see uh, the, um, the slope on uh, two different profiles from one point to another and how to use that. And um, that will be it. So there will be some waiting uh, when the function is working, uh, also depending on the settings, of course. So here you see the affected um, area with the, the pink lines, and uh, the profile is cutting out the, uh, the ex uh, existing terrain. And you see the existing here and the new terrain. And this is how it looks in 3D, um, also depending 
on how many existing points you have in this area. So the next example will be uh, from this pad to this pad. You see the contour lines that goes uh, quite some meters up and the total distance will be about 200 meters. So what you can do there is of course draw a, a line with some curves uh, almost straight from that pad to, uh, to the other, to the top here, and and see what what happens if you try to uh, run a, a road between these uh, two heights and pads. So maybe changing the sections here to uh, to something else yeah, that, that we can do if I have drawn two pads here. So. Um, I can do that afterwards. So I'm just starting the, the function actually with the same values here now on, on this path here. And you can easily see by just selecting the end point what the slope will be. So this is about 6.7 degrees. So um, for now, I'm going to check that uh, here. 6.75 degrees, um, this will be 11%, so this will be way over the regulation, but um, then we need to do some longer profile. So I uh, draw a longer profile, and this profile can, of course, also be adjusted to uh, and changed to, to something that will work. Um, and to see the result, we can also um, um, open this section here. So we can see what happens when running it on, on this section. So here, um, I'm going to do some, sorry, I'm going to set it a little bit higher. So set it at 10 meters, so it, will, it go, goes a little bit quicker. Um, so running the, the line profile on this line and see by selecting the last point that we are in within 3.3 degrees, so within the 6%, that is a regulation in Norway. So I don't know what, about your regulations, but you can always adjust that to your your regulations and for now I can I can run it just straight out um, if I'm going to put in more points I will probably go out with um, will not meet the regulations because I'm going steeper and and up and down again but uh, for now we can see how this is, is is working out so just run it straight out without any points and see how this is working. So again, a little bit waiting, but um, of course, yeah, if you have to do this manually, it will take probably days to do uh, if you want to use Revit. So. Um, the examples are also within like 200 meters and something. So if you're going to do bigger areas, um, I would recommend to, to split up the model. You see the affected area and the profile here. So I've also drawn a, a roads floor as a road here. So we can do the same thing here and aligning with the 10 meters settings um, I can use the perimeter points only this is a flat road it's a little bit simpler profile but it has this little swale on the side and you see the result here using the 10 meters you get a really quick uh, impression of what what is uh, how this will, uh, will look
So if we want to uh, do another approach here and change the whole path to maybe avoid a lot of cut and fill, because here we have a lot of um, a lot of cut and uh, on the second uh, section we have a lot of fill here on this side here so um, if you are way if you're good enough within the regulations you maybe want to adjust the, the path to match the, pro, the, the terrain a little bit more so we can actually do that uh, also from here so just starting the function one more time and and doing some adding some extra points um, adding some points here here and here so to start off i know the bottom of the the start point i'm going to adjust it a little bit so it will match the bottom of that path uh, that is actually 0 050 on on the start and a little bit lower 3950 the end i'm going to snap to the contents to try to match the existing terrain or snap on the existing terrain as much as possible and try to find a good placement of these points and I'm going to add some radius on it as well copy that value to the other points so there you see that um, some of the points are really uh, not that steep but here we're going out here we're almost meeting 10 percent already So the, um, the the small dots here will indicate the radius. Uh, you can actually zoom in as well. So um, for now, we have chosen to have a, um, a form factor that that can be printed with a print screen. So this is the first version. Um, just please let us know if you really want to have some annotation on it as well, so we can. She can show the the height of the points and the the slope between uh, the points and the radius of the of the points uh, in in the in the interface. Uh, so it will be easier to to print the whole path in just one picture, uh, or maybe you just want to zoom in on on parts of the, on the of the profile and print those individually. Um, but for now, I'm doing these changes and yeah, existing is a little bit different here. Uh, the new terrain, sorry, it was the one we have changed here. So the one is, is more straight from top to bottom. And run it again. So it's still with, um, um, with the 10 meters and we, we want to uh, <coughs> reset the, the area and also delete the, the boundary lines for the area. So with these settings, 10 meters, it will go quite quickly and you get a rough indication on how, how this will work. Um, so if, if you're not doing the demo like me, you can uh, adjust uh, the points, uh, the point interval a little bit down and get a smoother result but you have to wait a little little longer so um jan Tura, did i uh, miss out on some of the requirements things that are lying back the thoughts the principles no not yet <laughs> not yet no i think it Covered all elements uh, and the possibilities within the, the line profile functionality uh, is a tool, as you see, can be used in different scenarios, uh, different workflows depending on on your needs. 
these are some examples that we have highlighted in this this presentation. Um, this is uh, the, kind of the first version of Align Profile. And now the, we have some uh, some possibilities to to improve it even further on. Uh, Tyson mentioned some elements during the presentation. Um, so definitely, um, any feedback on uh, this feature, uh, trying to use it, or after this webinar, as you've been seeing the presentation today, are very much appreciated. Uh, so please do that. Uh, I have one question, guys. Um, if it's possible to see the the section profile in the plan view, but uh, I guess it was was, uh, was coming in through the chat. Yeah, yeah. So actually, a lot a, a lot of like arrows along the line or something. Yeah, I'm not sure. Um, oh. Maybe we need to discuss a little bit back and forth with the uh, the one who raised the question. Uh, we can get back to that one uh, after the webinar. Yes. Um, yeah, I, I don't think it is uh, possible to like present it in on a Revit sheet. I think that's what he is he, trying to ask for. Yeah. Uh, so you usually get a lot of uh, sections along the, the path. For now, we don't have that, but if that is something we really want, we, we can can use the ideation. We can really, yeah, should use the ideation form. You mentioned something mm -hmm. about that or something maybe afterwards? Yeah, we'll take it in the end of the webinar. Yeah. So mm -hmm. how we can help us improve it even further. Yeah, absolutely. Um, one more thing, just um, to keep in mind, um, as, as I mentioned, you can start the function uh, more than once and, and find out how how the profile is, uh, how the the new profile is. It's aligned totally in each other now because I aligned it to the, the existing, almost to the existing. Um, and you can always come back here and and delete delete points and and, uh, and move them around and run it again. Uh, but if you want to start from scratch and want to do it more easy, we we are actually saving this data in the lines. So if I'm taking out this line with the cuts and paste on the same place, we'll actually remove the data from that uh, line and input. So if you then run it again. It is uh, it's actually reset to, to nothing, so you can start from scratch immediately, and you can also use the the, the reset points manually to to delete uh, all the points that were placed for this modification. So you don't need to start the align profile function to to take this modification away and and go back to uh, to scratch from yeah to scratch to existing. And that, that was it for now. So I hope it was clear enough. Back to you, Jan uh, back, back to me. Great. Thank you very much, Matthias, for the presentation and working through the possibilities. Um, so um, as I mentioned in the beginning, yeah, this will be recorded and be available on demand early next week. So you have the possibility to revisit the presentation or share it with some colleagues that wasn't able to attend today. Um, more information on the product are available on avid.com. This is also the place where we will upload the, the video on the, the present of the recording on demand for next week. So going a little bit into the next webinar, uh, first Friday next month, so 5th of February. Uh, this is around uh, Navit architecture and another feature that we recently released, uh, and that one together with some some other new stuff will be presented on that Friday. So please register if you feel that it is interesting for you to attend that one. The website Navit.com. You have uh, all the product information. You have recorded webinars from back in uh, back in 2020 and 2019. You have also the possibility to, to dare to get into the ideation portal that we, we briefly talked about uh, during this presentation. So there's this page. Um, this is the portal for you as a user or 
yeah, a user on Aviate can add add suggestion or improvement or new ideas. So you go into this portal here. Uh, this is sign on. This is a single sign on solution that we all also implement now in December. So the same user ID you can use on Navi.com and also for the ideation portal. Okay, so if you was logged into the Navi.com already before you yeah. came here, you came straight in. Yeah, that's true. Mm -hmm. So then it's now it detects that I'm already logged into Navi.com and it, I have no password. I'm just getting into the ideation portal. And here you can add idea. Uh, you can go in the Navi.com for Revit part and you have the Navi.com site and landscaping there. You can read what other users are or have suggested of improvements on existing tools, both for the site and landscaping and other ones. The the find or the, the idea behind this is that everything you vote for or every idea that you have uh, written in here, you will be informed during the process where we're moving the idea from ideation to future consideration for to planned and all the way to we have shipped the functionality. So you will be informed when we have shipped it. That's how you can help us improve Navigate and uh, get your ideas into the product. I think that's my closure. New possibility to impact on how Navit will be in the future. So Matthijs, thank you for helping me out. Thank you, Jan Tere. And the others, thank you for joining us today. Uh, stay healthy and I see you next time. And it's soon weekend, so have a nice weekend when that one arrives. And see you next time. Bye bye. Have a nice weekend. Bye bye.